It's two minutes after 2 p.m. on uh, Monday, the 4th of August, 2008. This is Mark Strassman in Los Angeles with Utopia News. We're about to speak to uh, Sue Cately, who's the executive director of the California Solar uh, Energy Industries Association. Welcome to Utopia News. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on your program. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, uh, a slight controversy that seems to have arisen uh, between uh, the uh, uh, companies that install solar panels uh, on roofs in California and Southern California Edison. Could you introduce our audience to the, the general uh, outlines of, of what's involved in this question? Well, yes. The, um, recently, a couple of months ago, the um, largest utility in California, and I think the United States, announced that they plan to build, own, and operate solar systems that they were going to install on on buildings where they lease the roof from the building owners. Uh, Southern California has a lot of industrial warehouses, and Southern California Edison identified some sites where they felt that they could um, install solar systems that were good to, good for the grid. And, um, and did the California Solar Industries uh, uh, Association think this was a good idea to start with? Um, well, of course, we always think it's a good idea to install solar. Um, the question is, is how and uh, what's the benefit for um, the ratepayers is sort of the other question that comes up. That's going to be decided by the California Public Utilities Commission uh, probably later this year. Right, and, and what, are the, what are the dimensions of the question that the California Public Utilities Commission needs to address? Well, what they're going to look at is, um, in fact, they just issued at the end of this month, they issued something called a scoping ruling, where they're going to examine several um, several of these issues, and I'm just pulling this, uh, pulling this up there. But one of the questions that they're going to be asking is whether the cost estimates are reasonable, what is the cost effectiveness of the proposed plan, what the benefits are to the ratepayers and whether the proposed costs are reasonable in comparison to other projects. Um, they're going to be looking at whether or not the proposed program meets the requirements of the section in law that um, affects whether or not a utility can compete with the solar industry. It's called Public Utilities Code Section 2775.5. And the issues that we're, of course, looking at is um, when you are using ratepayer money, these, these systems actually, I, I guess I should correct myself, I said that Edison would own them. What actually is happening is that Edison's ratepayers would own them. And then the question that comes to our mind is whether uh, there are other options, like, for example, having private, private sector own the systems and operate them. And, and so what's the position of, the, of CalSEA in terms of what you'd like to see the, the rules and the pr process be? Well, I, of course, we're not in control of the outcome. What we're doing is we're hopeful that the Public Utilities Commission will uh, make a ruling in a way that um, fosters the increased use of solar in California. And we think that probably the best uh, solution would be something that allows the, the private capital markets to... Uh, to own and operate these systems rather than um, and just exclude uh, exclude the private capital markets. So you, you, you're talking about uh, setting up new new companies that that would that would own and operate these uh, uh, solar uh, uh, installations on the roofs of warehouses rather than have Southern California Edison own and operate them. In, in a nutshell, that's it. Except that it wouldn't it would probably not be new companies. I'm not sure how many of your listeners are aware that about, I think it's about 60% of the new solar projects in California are already owned by third-party investors. Um, that's been put together so that um, people can afford to put solar on their businesses without um, having the high capital cost. So, say, a little bit more, say a little bit more about how that works. Um, most things are called power purchase agreements. What, what it looks like to the customer is Someone, uh, a large business usually, like a company called Sun Edison does this, or Solar Power Partners, or Solar Power Inc. Those are the names of three companies that are actively doing that now in California. And what they do is they, they identify a site that has good solar access and uh, good structural uh, sound condition, and they install the system on your building, and you get the power from the 
from the generation from the solar system. The, these are called third-party ownership arrangements. The benefit for the, um, the companies is right now they're taking the uh, tax benefits, and usually a lot of, a lot of uh, large building owners, they may or may not have a tax liability, but they certainly have an energy consumption on, on, their, on their bill. What would be different about uh, the private sector view on the distributed generation that Edison is doing is that these, these companies would, would, instead of building them for the on-site energy use, they would actually build them for exporting energy into the grid. So, so companies like Sun Edison and Solar Power Partners, and I think you said Solar Partners, Inc.? Yes. The, the, those, those companies would be able to finance and, uh, and own these distributed facilities uh, instead of um, Southern California Edison. What um, we, I, I, well, I, ca I cannot speak to what their specific business plans are. I really, right. companies, I don't, companies I don't like, work that closely, right. but companies like, like them could right. possibly do that, yes. And, and what would be the advantage to ratepayers if that were the case instead of what Southern California Edison is proposing? Well, they wouldn't have to foot the whole bill. That's the biggest advantage is that if you had a private company that used its own capital to finance the project and sell the power to the grid, then the uh, ratepayer would not have to foot the entire bill of the uh, of the purchase and operation of the system. So, so the the net result, the bottom line, would be that rate Southern California Edison ratepayers would be paying less. Well, that would that would be the plan here. And then, uh, you know, I think that actually the, what we've asked for in our in our application is to allow both, and that way customers have choice. And you've probably heard that kind of thing come from Telcia before. We use that same argument for why solar customers should not be required to be on time of use rates. In other words, we want options. Give the customer the option. And in this case, it's exactly the same thing. Let's give the customer an option. Why Why should the utility be the only, uh, only option to a building owner who wants to put solar on their roof and export the power into the grid? So you're so we, right. think, we think we're fairly reasonable in this. So essentially what you're arguing is, is against Southern California Edison having a monopoly on this distributed generation and allow other, other firms to participate in, the, in that market as well. I think that's a fair way to characterize it, yes. Okay. H have, have you filed any formal uh, uh, papers with the CPUC asking them uh, to do what you'd prefer? Yes, and you can see all of that on the, uh, on the PUC's website. All of the comments and protests are filed there. And do and you know what the timing is for them to respond or whether Southern California Edison has responded and, and what the state of play is in, in, that, in that arena? I, I do not know. I know, that, I know that Southern California Edison would like this to move forward as quickly as possible. I believe their projects um, are also kind of in the same pickle that the rest of the solar industry is that in, the, in that they need to be, meet the tax credit requirements. Right. So they have to have their systems installed by the end of this year. So I'm really not sure what the timing is of the PUC other than I think that they're going to schedule hearings for uh, the fall of this year, so like October, November time frame. Okay. Is, is the, uh, are the investment and production tax credits, which are still in limbo in the U.S. Senate, uh, if, they don't, uh, if they don't go through, uh, how is that going to affect all of this? I, I really don't know how this will affect uh, Southern California Edison. I do know that it seriously affects the solar industry as a whole. In fact, if anything, it might hurt Edison's ability to get product into California since most of the manufacturers are moving their, um, their product overseas where the, uh, the market is a lot more attractive for solar. Okay. Other, other, other countries have more certainty, so the companies are moving there. Right.